Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we're doing something a little bit different that we haven't done much on this channel. It is going to be a tutorial on how to use the rotoscope brush in After Effects to get this effect. For this edit, I will be using Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects in conjunction. At this stage, I'd like to point out that I am not an expert in either of these programs, but I was able to do a little bit of Googling and I was able to figure out how to recreate this desired effect. Also, understanding the basics of this process will open up a whole world for you to start using cool effects and things on your footage and projects in future. So let's get into it. All right, so we got Adobe After Effects open here. We put in the file. It is one clip that I want to do adjustments to, drag and drop it into the timeline. Now we want this roto brush up here, but before I do that, I'm going to just trim this clip to the desired size. And oh, that's not the right backflip. Okay, so that first backflip, I did not like my landing. So as you can see, it was garbage. I did it again. So let's trim that down as well. Move it over. Okay, this is the better one. So we're gonna go about halfway through that backflip. That's where I'm going to sort of appear in the middle of the sweater flip. I don't need that dog in the background at the end. So we'll cut it down. Okay, this is what we're working with. Perfect. Now, here's your roto brush right up here. Click on it. You can't do anything quite yet. So first you're gonna do a double click on that blue bar and it opens up the kind of green plus cursor. Now you're just gonna drag around whatever it is that you want to rotoscope uh, on the inside. And you know, you can do a, a fairly half-assed job of it. It's gonna give you what it interpreted from this whole thing, which isn't exactly perfect, but you know, you've got a white sweater with a white sky background. It's gonna have some difficulties. This is where you make your adjustments. So by holding Alt, you can now subtract any of the any of the footage that you don't want to be involved. So you just kind of go back and forth with adding in your body parts there that need to be accounted for, and then you hold Alt and you get rid of the other stuff that doesn't need to be accounted for. Basically, you're gonna go and do this all around your body in every single scene. So you're using page up and page down to go to the next frame and you're gonna do these little tweaks and adjustments on every single frame of your subject. So I've obviously sped things up. I think you get the gist of it. You've gotta do a lot of tweaks. It's a little bit time consuming, sure, but on the grand scheme of things, you know, this whole edit took me less than an hour. So it, I would say it's worth the time and energy if this is what you want to create. So I'm gonna keep going around, getting rid of what I don't need, making it a little tighter. Um, at the same time, I also think it's probably not a bad idea to have a little bit extra footage because I'm not really putting anything behind me that's gonna notice how wide I am. Like I could probably have extra um, footage on the outside. I mean, it doesn't have to be like right up against my hand if it's got a little bit of tree or something on the outside. That's not gonna make a difference because it's just gonna be in the background and it's gonna match what the background already is anyways. So we keep doing our adjustments. Once we're happy with our adjustments, call it a day, have a look through, and then we can drop it into uh, Premiere Pro. Okay, tweak up the hair a little bit, get those hands involved. Do my little happy dance, yep, lovely. And then as I'm walking away, tweak up the hair a little bit more on this. Okay, looking all right. And good enough. Back to the feet. Last little bit of adjusting, I think, here. And we should have it pretty good. Then when it's all said and done, give it a little save. Have a look over your final product. Make sure that it looks like you're outlined perfectly all the way through. And let's move on into Premiere Pro with it. Before we continue, I just wanted to mention that we are doing a major spring cleaning right now and all of our merch is about 80% off. So head on over to highonlife.ca and take a look. 
Okay, so I've already got it in Premiere Pro here. I wanted to save a little bit of time. Um, I've got my main sweater flip action, which is the blue. I've cut it in half right where I tossed the sweater. And then this pink bar on top obviously is the rotoscoped backflip effect that I've put in. So it looks all right, matches pretty well. I mean, obviously I was standing in position where I needed to throw the sweater and needed to do the backflip. So I didn't have to adjust really the position of my flip. It's all in order there. However, there's still a sweater landing on the floor and sitting there in the middle of my clip, which I need to get rid of. So I will take this clip, I will duplicate it. I'm gonna get rid of the audio because I don't need that involved whatsoever. I'm gonna take this, move it over underneath, and now I've got a second clip of the same nature over top of the other one. Let's reposition so that we can basically use the second clip to match the first clip and then hide that sweater. So I'm gonna take the crop tool up here on the top right, just search crop, and I'm gonna put it on top of this second clip that is over top of the first one, so the, the higher blue bar. On the left panel, you can see it's got the crop effects, left, top, right, bottom, etc. So I'm not gonna walk you through it perfectly. Oh, not that direction, we'll go this way. Okay, so you just need to make these tweaks as you see fit, whatever works best for you, so that you can crop out that sweater and boom, right where he tosses, right where my backflip comes in is when the crop effect takes place. And actually it cropped out that truck in the background too, which I'm not too happy about. So I will have to adjust that, um, make some changes in here soon as well. Otherwise, it is pretty seamless. A little bit of a celebratory dance from the two of me. <laughs> and actually at this point, it is really slow loading. I am not really enjoying how lengthy this load process is every time I want to look at my clips to, to tighten up everything. So what I'm going to do next is zoom out of this whole thing. I'm going to put an in marker on the left side and an out marker on the right side of this red bar at the top of my timeline. That red bar pretty much just means that it's not being rendered yet and so it has a, a bit more delay. Okay, now that that's rendered, move around a little bit more freely. Okay, my hands are pretty good, not, not too much clipping and cutting. There is still a sweater in the bottom corner because I didn't crop it perfectly yet, so we'll make a few more adjustments. So what's really cool is that you can go back into After Effects and you can make your adjustments onto the rotoscope that you've done. So let's say I missed a couple of pieces and I brought it into Premiere and I'm now looking at it and realizing, oh no, some of this clipping is no good, I need to adjust it. And you go back into uh, After Effects, you can make the adjustments right then and there. And as soon as you do it, it automatically updates because you've imported it into another Adobe product, Premiere that is just going to communicate with After Effects the whole way through. So every time you make a change in After Effects, because you've got that save file that's still open and you've got it in Premiere, it'll just update it as you go. Every time you make a tweak, it's gonna give you that red bar on top saying that this whole file is unrendered and then you have to render it again. It takes a few minutes. Generally, it's worthwhile so that you can fine tune every little bit, but it's kind of a cool effect that you can work with them both simultaneously and really fluidly. So we do it again, we flip the sweater, I've fixed the truck in the background, there's no sweater on the floor, my arm's not clipping too much. Oh, actually there was a little bit of a clip, look at this. Um, right when I'm walking away, you, on the right side, but my left arm clips a little bit, did you see that? Boom, a little bit of it didn't make it through the final cut. Boom, right there, missing some arm. All right, so we're gonna go back into After Effects, gonna make some tweaks, not a problem. Done, and render it again. Have a little look through, and as it fixed, should be. Now as I walk forwards, let's go frame by frame. Sweater's there, arm is there, okay. Yeah, looks much better.
And so that is the essentials of how to make this entire edit. Now, obviously it's going to take a little bit longer the first time and realistically it took me longer than I'm showing you right now because there were a lot of small tweaks and changes that I was fiddling with. And you know what? Obviously your setting is important where you're shooting and you're gonna want minimal moving parts in the background, whether that's people, whether that's traffic or vehicles. I thought it would be fine and it's actually a crazy bad coincidence that the biggest vehicle on the road that day happened to go by right as I did that sweater flip. Um, cameraman didn't really catch it or didn't realize that that was going to cause any problems. So the truck disappearing means I couldn't just crop 50%. It's like I had to crop a little bit of this and a little bit of this and try to find just this perfect area that gets rid of the sweater but can sort of try to leave the truck driving by in. So that was my mistake. Ideally, you just don't have anything moving in the background to make this as seamless as possible. But nonetheless, you're gonna have to spend a little bit of time tweaking and adjusting the whole way through. But for the most part, it's fairly straightforward. It's fairly simple. And um, you know, if you're somebody like me who just really wants to learn new cool tricks on the computer and fun edits and stuff, I thought this was a really cool one. It was pretty straightforward, easy enough to do. And of course, you know, you don't have to do a backflip. You can throw a sweater into like a cannonball and then land. You could throw another object that's the same color as the clothing you're wearing, wearing and try to match that. Whatever you wanna do. I like backflips. I saw somebody do this on Instagram. I thought it was really cool. I wanted to learn it. Didn't know where there were any tutorials on how to do it, but there were tutorials on how to do the roto brush effect and I kind of realized obviously that was involved in this because you can't have two of you in one time. So obviously it was taken from another clip. So how do you do it? This is it. I learned it, I figured it out and I wanted to share it with you in case anybody else was interested. And here we have it. Hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Uh, obviously no, there are probably better ways to do things and I'm not a master at any of this stuff, but was able to figure it out and happy to share it with you guys. So cheers, thanks for watching.